morning, everyone. Welcome to Ghost News Today. Ron Nicoletti along with Brian Nano. And just want to wish everybody a happy Kentucky Oaks Day, of course, tomorrow, the Kentucky Derby. So lots of exciting things going on. I got the 11, uh, 1250 post this mm -hmm. afternoon. So we're joining you just a little early. A uh, really sultry day here in South Florida. The main track is fast. The turf course is firm. And we got the all-weather to Peter to deal with this afternoon, which is always a lot of fun. Yeah. And don't forget, tomorrow we're at 1220, that early post as well. And uh, good luck to our uh, Gulfstream Park Oaks winner, uh, Kathleen O, in the uh, Kentucky Oaks, undefeated, and has a big shot in there. So, uh, yeah, a lot of excitement going on this weekend. We've got two stakes tomorrow. We've got two stakes on Sunday, uh, 12 race cards. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it, and a good one today as well. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, get right into the cards. Oh, well, let's tell you about the Rainbow Six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got it a little later on. It's race four, $150,000 gross jackpot guarantee, $150,000. So that kicks off. Kicks off in race number four. Excuse me, I'm trying to sneeze here, trying to hold it in, but uh, I guess the allergies are getting me a little bit this afternoon, but I was able to stop it. So here we go. It's eight to five, uh, six to five right now on the six. So one of the horses I know Brian used on his early pick five ticket, so let's check it out. The only one I used on the early pick five ticket. We'll single with my best bet of the day. We'll rip the band aid off early here, see if we can get some traction. Then we go a three by three by three. The two year olds are back in race two and i'll go with the experience of cajun hope for mike yates and then in race three i go down inside the frolic man in race number four i'll go to the five strong embrace we got a replay of that one coming up and then another single in the get out leg unified conquest for me 1350 ronnie Jose Garofalo and Ionel Bito in the saddle in that uh, five horse in race number five. Well, you have your uh, best bet, I believe, of the day in here, so you take it over with the six gleaming brutality. Ooh, I'm not a big fan of the name, but uh, that doesn't mean this horse is not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> An odd one, to say the least. The debut, I thought, was, was fine. Uh, the winner that day is Republic for Safi. That's the half to Rombauer who won the Preakness last year. So uh, it comes out of the right kind of race. It was a pretty fast race for the level. You can nitpick about the drop. I get that. But you know what? They only paid 12 5 for this daughter of violence. So she's still in for 35 We get the tightener out of the way. Steve Glacera's 27% second time maidens. And I, I just think this one from the right post as well is in with a big, big chance here. Like I said, the single, I don't think it's any surprise right now. She's a very heavy favorite. Yeah, and Steve uh, worked her half mile bullet on mm -hmm. the, the Tapita surface here. So uh, just to get her you know, acclimated to running uh, this afternoon. Uh, and I did go with my long shot mm -hmm. here today, and that is the number four, Oxo Mock, who's turning back to his sprint distance on the Tapita today after setting the early pace, fading. But it was against this level of competition going a mile on the turf. Fausto Gutierrez just having a great summer. Well, all year he's been fantastic here. Miguel Vasquez got his thousand victory the other day. And this is a combo uh, surface switch turn back. And if you go back and look at that race last time out, I thought this horse ran very well there. Liz Ralph. Ralph Heckless over there. <laughs> <laughs> Live Ralph. TV, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Nix uh, giving us a couple of signals there. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, so. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe that's uh, a so, sign. But. What do you think? Oxen Muck shot? Well, listen, you got the right trainer and you got the right jockey, right? And, and uh, when you put them together, too, they're five for ten. So that bodes well. And, and aside from my best bet, who's, you know, bottoming right. out the board right now, there's no one else to be scared of in here. So if for whatever reason, gleaming brutality stubs her toe a little bit, you kind of have to take the thought process. I've only got her to beat, and Oxamach is certainly uh, one of the ones for a trainer that's been very, very hot. I like the cut back here. We've got a lot of foundation as well. And the two sprints that she ran in, you know, they were against Maiden Special Weight Company, so much much better. So, you know, I can see what you're going with here. I can, I'm picking up what you're putting down. And, and I've always been a fan of, uh, you know, showing speed on the grass, turning back in distance and uh, the barn is good. So trying to get a little bit of a price sitting up there at a nine to one because all the money right mm -hmm. now on Gleaming Brutality. Other horse I had some interest in was the two bullet on tap. We're stretching out just a little bit today. So the pressured pace, finished second again, as the favorite actually, against 25 maidens. That was going five furlongs on the all weather to Peter. How about Jose D'Angelo? What a banner day he he had yesterday with three victories on the card. And Paco Lopez, I believe, had one or at least two, one or two victories on the card yesterday. Yeah, we were kind of mentioning, you know, this is the first time that Jose has been in a little bit of a prolonged slump. And then, you know, right away, three yesterday. So he's <laughs> back doing doing his thing. And it's a send mission here with Paco. 45 flat last time to the half mile. I don't know if she's going to have to work that hard to make the lead. And look at the money she's taking right now. Nine to five up there into the teeth of a strong, strong favorite. I said, hey, 
Well, what's the name of your horse that you have in second, number eight? Yeah, I mean, she's drawn well. She's tactical. Claudio Gonzalez has been going in, in good uh, sorts of late. And I think, you know, if, if, if there's some hitting up front, she's going to be in the right spot off the far turn. Oh, let's go to race number two. Four and a half furlongs. These are made in special way. Two-year-olds. We did have an early scratch in the year of the number two horse in Sadable Eva. And uh, that was a 20 to one shot in there. And uh, as you said, we, you went with the number three Cajun Hope on top of your ticket. You would think it should be primed and ready to run well today. Odds on on debut and ran well to be second. Was well, well clear of third. The winner got loose that day. And we know in these two-year-old races, when you break running, it's a very, very very snappy trip and sometimes a, they're off you lose angle plays here and I just love the experience in these these races you know he's the only one uh tenth full out of the dam the others weren't much but you know we know how good Mike Yates is too with these Cajun breezes too yeah we got a stat to yeah. show you with Mike Yates with his two-year-olds now this is making their second start on the dirt he's eight for 42 19 percent 50 percent into money 139 is the return of investments and you would know that because uh everybody's aware of the Cajun breezes and uh, what a great job Mike does with them so just wanted to point that out uh, that stat so we knew it would be good this afternoon 19 percent uh the horse that i went in second is the one awesome strong is the son of awesome slew debuting for Jorge delgado bullet half mile drill showing in preparation for its first start the bond going to show you a stat with jorge delgado with his two-year-old first time starters on the dirt Five for 20, 25 percent, 55 percent in the money. 162 is the return of investment over the past couple of years. So I wanted to give you like a picture of how these trainers do with the first time starters, second time starters when you're dealing with these two year olds. And I think that's important, too, because these are, uh, you know, somewhat niche races, especially you get a two year old ready this early in the year. This is the ninth full out of the dam, a half to bad debt. who earned over 800,000, most of it on turf. Also, also a half to our buddy do up Don did some good yeah. things, uh, you know, during the championship meet. And uh, Miguel Vasquez lands here, too. And I think that's a sign of that this horse can run a little bit. Yeah, you had to mention Doo-Wop, Don. I've been chasing that horse for nah, two years, being a fan us. of Doo-Wop in here. Uh, the number four, we just saw yeah, Ralph Nix here. Nico's having fun as a gilded son of Kozan, debuting for Ralph. Pair of productive three furlong workouts showing in preparation for this assignment. Edwin Gonzalez going to hop aboard. Yeah, I don't know if he gave us a wink or a little, <laughs> you know, a push there or what. But uh, six full out of the dam. The other five weren't weren't much the dam was okay she earned 167,000 what I will say about the dam three for three to start her career including a stakes win at Calder in the three ring so maybe there's some precociousness here yeah we'll see that uh, you know that family always seems to be run mm -hmm. well in their uh, you know in their two-year-old seasons they're very precocious uh third race this afternoon six furlong claim is three rolls of four and up non winners of three in life 20 down to 16 six in the field this afternoon and uh, let's see we'll start it off in here with the horse you have on top and that is frolic man is the only two-time winner in the field now he cuts back to his best distance four races two wins if the start Stalking the pace and tiring against this level, going a mile for Danny Hurtak, and you're getting Miguel Vasquez handling shorter distance this afternoon. Well, you said a lot of things that I like. The two-time yeah, yeah. winner is a big deal. You know, everybody else in here has won. I, I, I can't under, uh, understate that kind of an angle. In the cutback, you mentioned it perfectly. Look at the last time this horse sprinted on the dirt, going six furlongs, three back. It was a really, really strong effort. By far the best one of the son of overanalyzes. So I think he's got plenty of foundation. Now we cut back. He's going to have it to be able to chase the speed and not let it get too far away. I think he's in a good spot in here. A horse I did not use on my ticket is the number two high press, who you, know, you have, a, uh, I think, a replay you want yeah. to show. I'm going to take a look at our first replay here. Uh, on Gulfstream today. High Press is going to be the 11 horse here. And, you know, he's just dueling early early and often. Look at the splits. They're, they're, they're wild for a mile and 70. This is on the Tapita. I get it. But, boy, I thought he held well. And the other thing, too, is, okay, the horse he's dueling with, the five, Ronnie, he runs dead last. Right. So it really kind of says how well High Press ran. Now we're cutting back. He's got good sprints under him. Yes, they were on the Tapita. I get that. But I thought this was a much, much better effort than maybe just, oh, he finished fourth, beating seven lengths. There's nothing here. I think this was a sneaky good effort. And now on the cutback, we get to the dirt here, too. I think he could last a little longer than people think. I, I did go with the number five in here, too, Wayne, who's uh, moving to the Oscar Gonzalez barn after the claim and uh, taking a little bit of a shaky drop this afternoon to the 20 level after following that game. $40,000 made an optional claiming victory. Comes back, breaks slow, finished last, 
even money favorite that day against 35 two lifetime claimers last time out. So, you know, the horse, if he runs back to those numbers, he wins for fun. But why the drop it has me concerned. You are a braver man than <laughs> I am, my friend. <laughs> uh uh. I don't know. He just, he was not good last time. And, you know, he leaves Ralph's barn. You mentioned it. Claim for 35, in for 20. There's some warning signals here. I see him at 7 to 5 on the line, too. I will say this check the tote board on this horse. I think that's very, very important. If the money shows. That's a good sign. If you see this horse up there like five to one, yikes. <laughs> yeah. Run for the hills. The number four, I'll finish, who faced better on the dirt during 2021, goes back to the main, returned from the layoff, showed little against those 35 style optional claimers going five in the Tapita. Eddie Pleasy Jr., really good with these horses, making his second start after this type of layoff. And you get now Missy El Jaramillo handling the surface switch this afternoon. Yeah, there's, there's reason to think this horse will run much better. You look at the maiden claiming win. It was three back, and it was kind of a long time ago in terms of maybe where this horse is right now, but he should run better. He got the tightener out of the way. Eddie's been so, so good now basically all year long, and he's even up the game a little bit here at the Royal Palm Meet. So I, I think this horse can run better today. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, it'll be the Rainbow Six with the $150,000 gross jackpot guarantee pool, and I'll show you my ticket. Good luck. And Back to Gulfstream today, Ron and Brian. Fourth race is going to be on the turf this afternoon at a mile. But it also starts our Rainbow Six this afternoon. I got a little different ticket Whoa, today boy. of $48.60. And I got the old DJ single in race number eight, the two horse in there. Uh, we'll talk about the fourth in a minute. Got lots of coverage throughout the day. Race five, I went with Unified Conquest on Jet Air and Sarah Watt. In race number six, Feats of Feathers, Senseless Drama, Lady J was the morning line favorite. I'm trying to beat that one. In, in race number seven this afternoon, the American Ninja, the one. Mr. Matuchek and Diligen, who is the morning line favorite in. We got a video and a stat we'll show you in there. Race number eight is my single here. Number two, Strike, strike Card is returning to her allowance optional claiming ranks. He's knocking heads with uh, a classic Causeway, uh, White Barrio, Charge It. I think this is the spot where he wakes up. And then I got lots of coverage in the uh, last race. My top pick is the six major king. I like it. I did not single strike hard, but I easily could, and I picked him on top, and I think he's in a good spot today. Yeah, and, you know, I think we get, I don't know if we get a little bit of a price. I think we're second or third choice yeah. on the morning line. Uh, this one, as I mentioned, the fourth race, one mile on the turf, starter optional claim of Phillies, three-year-olds, started for 35 with the optional tag at 35, jockey change on the two, make the rider Luca Panici, and we'll start it off with your horse in here, the five strong embrace, who's stretching out today to the mile. Yeah, let's take a look at the replay, too, and strong embrace is going to be the three horse in this spot here, and and uh, he was wide the entire way. You can see him hung out there. He made first run into a loose winner. The finishing order, four, five, three in here. So he's making first run. And I think what happened, Ronnie, was he kind of paid the price for having to do this, kind of doing the dirty work. No one else went up to Bravo Zulu. He takes a crack at it. And I think what happened was he lost second to Hatari because of that. Thought it was a pretty good effort in here. Now we've got Paco getting aboard. You would think he's going to put him in the race a little early earlier and I think that's going to be beneficial as well it was also only his second time running on turf he won a slow race on debut he was disqualified that day so I think there's a lot of upside with strong embrace as well 
Yeah, I mean, I got him on the ticket for all the reasons you mentioned, Mike. Make it the trainer, Paco Lopez. It's order of strong mandate. I did go with the horse you have. We got our exacto flip-flopped in here with Paintbrush, who's dropping a notch on the competition scale. She had that three-race win streak going both on Tepita, mm -hmm. and there was one on the dirt. Uh, ended when she finished fifth, but that was her career tape debut against 50 starter optional claimers going a mile. Antonio Sano going to have Miguel Vasquez uh, top. I just think this might be a nice spot for this horse. Yeah, I think she's the horse to beat. She might need a little pace help. I, I'm a little worried about that. Barn's been pretty cold, too. I mean, I think, you know, it, it's overdue to get going. The horses are running okay, but they're not winning. Wouldn't want to take too short a price, but I do think she's a major, major player in here. Well, I'm glad you said that because every time you say Barn's not going that well, they win like four yesterday, They win right? like five races, so Antonio's pockets will be filled, of course. And then the number seven, Fish Mooney, who's going to try to turn the tables on Strong and Brace at the eight furlongs after closing. You saw her finish fourth behind her in their recent clash at seven and a half. Mark Cassie got a go-to jock Edwin Gonzalez in the RNs. Yeah, I don't have any knocks here. I mean, the, the post could be a little problematic. I know it's a field of seven, but you don't want to get marooned out there. And she's another one without a lot of early speed, and I kind of think that might help Strong Embrace a little bit as well. Go to race number five this afternoon, about five furlongs on the Tapita starter optional claim is three. Your old starter for 16 or less of that same tag kicks off the late pick five. Man, I keep ending up with these singles to start my sequences, but, you know, I, I like that angle, to be honest with you, because you get value on horses that are going to get over bet probably. That's what I did here on this $45 ticket. So we single unified conquest. We'll get to it in a second. Lady J in race number six, a three uh, three deep with uh, the three. Mr. Matuzek, who you mentioned earlier on, will have a replay of American Ninja too. I, you know, Brasstown and Strike Hard. If you want to, you know, you could single Strike Hard. I'm just worried about Brasstown getting loose, so I wanted to put him on there. And uh, my long shot is in the finale, I would think. Yours is too? No, no, no. no. Wow. Mine was in the first. Oh, oh that's so right. That's right. Uh, I'm five deep. I have no opinion whatsoever in the finale, but Sterling Harmony is a firster for Steve Dwoskin, who's got his guy, Miguel Vasquez, aboard. We'll see what we get there. Yeah, we'll see how that race uh, nine plays out. And if you got singles like Brian has one, and I have one actually in my uh, late pick six, maybe, uh, you know, uh, Rainbow Six, maybe you uh, single and you go a little deeper in that last race like you did. Getting back to this fifth, uh, about five on the Tapita. Uh, this one, uh, the one you have single is Unified Conquest. He, once again, the only two time winner in the field. Yeah, exactly. And again, I just can't say enough about that angle. And I think he's going to get some speed to run into. And it's dangerous when you want to drop out the back or you want to close going this snappy five on the Tapita, it can get dangerous, but I think there's enough contested speed in here to set him up, and quite honestly, I don't know if it matters, because he just runs everybody down <laughs> anyway. He's back, he's on the drop, and boy, he's a really, really good horse. Yeah, he always runs, he never get you know, he, he you know, steps up a little tougher, but he's a two-time winner against this level of competition. The six on Jet Air, who defeated 16 Maidens, won that race by almost four lengths last November. Now we're going to drop some returns from the layoff today. Hit the board in one of those two $35,000 Tapita sprints including that fifth place finish behind aforementioned Unified uh, Conquest going before going to the sidelines in February for Henley Colazzo. You know, this horse has run okay, especially at the 16 level. And I think if you're looking for a little bit of a price, this one's 6-1 to one on the morning line and you get Miguel Vasquez who's just been riding in great form. Everything you said is uh, I'm agreeing with, and, and he gets the benefit of drawing outside the other speed, which is down inside with bourbon over ice, dirt road dollars, and, and maybe even Sarawa in some way, shape, or form. And on jet air is outside of it. That's the right spot to be if you think you're going to survive a tussle. And then we both had the number three symmetrist in Sarawad, who was second against 25 maidens, his only previous sprint on the Tapita. Miguel, uh, excuse me, Edwin Gonzalez will figure it out because he's just, he, you watch him on the Tapita and he just makes the right moves at the right time. And so he'll have this one sitting off the speed a little bit and he's probably going to get first run coming out of good races too. Race six this afternoon, back on the firm turf course. Starter allowance, Phillies and Mass, three-year-olds and up started for 16,000 or less. Very few scratches on the card today. Certainly none in this race and uh, we'll start it off with uh, Lady J who's hoping to save just that tad more for the stretch drive today. Yeah, I, I think she's in a really, really good spot. I think her turf races overall not only are better than these, I think they're the most consistent as well. You can easily just draw a line 
through the Tapita race, two, two back, and you look at her last three turf races, uh, the last two especially are right there. She draws well. She can be on the lead. She can be just off the lead. It gives Lionel Reyes a lot to work with. See, the way I saw the race with senseless drama, you know, trained by Carlos David the inside, you know, failed to show his, her usual speech. He broke badly last mm -hmm. time out. So I thought maybe a duel would erupt between senseless drama and Lady Jane set it off for the three feats of feather, who's going back to the turf after showing some late interest against those 20 state bred optional clavers. And that was that pair of races. They were trying to get this one on the turf, moving to the torpedo. The mare is good at the distance, four starts a win. Two seconds in the third. I think sits in the garden spot behind the suspect pace. I'm not sold on Lady J, who stopped. Senseless drama. Mm -hmm. It's got to break sharply from the inside. Maybe a horse like this. They go up and duel, and this one sits the trip. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I mean, she is going to get some pace help. I, I, I know she's a deep, deep closer, but I also think she doesn't have to drop out the back because you look at those races at Tampa where she came from way out of it. They were going crazy fast early. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go that fast today, so she'll be a little closer. That race three back at Tampa was very, very fast. It would put her right on the line with a group like this. Let's go to race number seven this afternoon, about a mile seven. The odds on the torpedo claim is four and up. $20,000. Didn't have the one of two scratches in here of the number six. Race Craft will be declared out of race number seven today. Uh, we'll start it with uh, Mr. Matuzek, uh, who we are, you have on top back in the Peter Waldebron. Well, <laughs> that's the thing right there. <laughs> Peter's just been going, you know, great guns here in the last, what, six, eight days or so. We get back to the Tapita here. Uh, it claims this one, or this one was claimed from Billy Thorino, so now it was with Robert Mosco. Now it's going to go to Peter Waller. You look at the Tapita races, they're very, very strong. I think they were probably against better fields in the way this one shakes up to Ron. And I, I just think he's in a good, good spot here for a barn that's just going great guns right now. I do have the number one American Ninja on top, and I think you have a video yeah. you want to show. This one was impressive against this level of competition on the Tapita. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the turf race where just mm. nothing was going well for this guy here. Here he is, the five. By the way, we're going a mile and a half here. So the last thing you want to do is be checking and getting rank. And here we go here down inside. It's just not happening. Look at the hold. He's got to pull him back. He wants to run. And it's just not really happening. Rode to Meath that day. Forgot to stop. Yamato's back there who's really, really good as well. He's a little rank. He's a little aggressive here. When you're going a mile and a half, it's just not the spot you want to do. Look at it. Again, he's getting tightened up on here. He wants to run. Run on. He didn't send them through. So I, I just think American Ninja uh, now, you know, today we're going to get back. Obviously, this is on the turf here going a mile and a half. Well, today we're going to cut back. And here it is here. He's going to get tightened up on again late. So he would have been a lot closer in, in here, too. I'm not going to tell you he's going to win this race, but watch him get sandwiched out here. Comes out of it late. And, you know, he would. He's not going to win, but he would have been a heck of a lot closer. I just think all things considered, when you're going a mile and a half run to be beaten, what, two and a half lengths? That's pretty darn good. And then look at his last two torpedo races. Really, really sharp. Really, really fast. Too. And well, sorry, yeah. and let's show you a stand on Steve Caceres, who's the trainer with horses going from turf to torpedo over the past two years. He's five for 22, 23 percent, 59 percent in the money. 131 is the return investment. Glad you showed that video. That his horse had more trouble than you could, uh, you know, fit on the on the page almost in there. And that was going a mile and a half. You know, diligent uh, goes to the Bobby Hess Jr. Bond after the claim responded to the drop down with that rousing five length victory against ten claimers going a mile and the 16th. Uh, Paco uh, Lopez rise. This one is an all-weather specialist. Seven starts, three wins in second, third. Is this too tough for this horse in this spot? That's the question because he couldn't lose that race last yeah. time. We talk, I remember yeah. talking about he should have been one to five in that yeah. race last time. Now we, But I will say this. It's an aggressive rise in class by Bobby. It's a confident move. You know, he ran really, really well last race. We're going to see where he susses out, though, for 20. Yeah, with, uh, yeah that's what I, you know, I put him further down. I can understand people. But maybe bet him. He's the morning line favorite and betting him in there. But we'll see how it is hard. So, uh, you know, we're going to go to race number eight where I have my single this afternoon in the Rainbow Six. Uh, this one is one mile allowance, optional claim three-year-olds and up. The optional claiming price, $62,500. You know, I looked around in this race, and, you know, Brasstown is stepping up the competition today, albeit in this short field. But Strike Card is returning to the allowance optional claim.
Jamie Ranks. Now, also getting Lasix after following the second place finish here. That was in a $150,000 Macho Man. Macho Man. Comes back, runs fourth behind Kentucky Derby bound, runners classic Causeway, and that was in the grade three, uh, Sam Davis up at Tampa. Seventh behind Wider Barry on Charge It. Charge It, my pick in the Derby, in the, Flor in the Kentucky Derby here, and I picked him also in the Florida Derby. So this horse is flatted up and down, drop, getting Lasix. I think might be the spot. Wider Barry on my Kentucky Derby pick. <laughs> so yeah, this is a good horse. He's a serious horse. Uh, he's back. I'm not going to call him his, their friends today because he's facing <laughs> older horses today. So yeah, we, yeah. we do have to note that. Uh, but the Lasix goes on today. You know, Matt Williams has put him in some aggressive spots. He hasn't really embarrassed himself, by the way, either. He's acquitted himself nicely. I think he's in a good spot, kind of the old all systems go. Let's get him back on track today and then see where we go going forward. Yeah, but I, I could see having, you know, Brasstown, who finds, I think, a perfect spot because of the size of the field to step up the competition after using his speed to defeat those 16 starter optional claimers. That was in back to back races at the distance for Antonio Sano, owned by Imaginary Stables. Edgar Perez named the handle. This guy looks like the inside speed. He's got to go, I would think. So here's the question What does Amicio Jaramillo and America? American Prince do early because if he doesn't go with Brasstown, they'll probably never see him again. He's so good, and when you let him control things up front, you're not going to run him down. So the question is, if you're a strike hard fan like you know Ronnie and I are, we need a little pressure from American Prince on Brasstown. It's one of the reasons I dutched him in the pick five because I don't want to see Brasstown freewheeling on the lead in here. American Prince is going back to the main track, the horse you were alluding, turning back to the mile, chase the pace, faded against those 62,500 optional claimers going a mile in the turf. Talking about Ralph Nix, he's a strong 29% with horses going from turf to dirt. So uh, we'll see how that horse runs this afternoon. We'll see if my single can get it home. But I agree with you with Brasstown, you know. Uh, maybe he gets the chance to get first run. It'll be tough. Now going to the ninth and final race, no scratches. About five furlongs on the turf. These are maiden optional claimers, three-year-olds and up. $40,000. I'll start it off with my top selection in here, Major King, who's going to the turf after dueling for the lead, finishing second in his $35,000 career debut, going five on the Tapita. So I found the stat on Victor Barboza Jr., just first time turf, all levels. He's four for 13. That's 31 percent, 48 percent of the money, just as over the past year. Oh, and he's got a $7.98 return investment. So one of those four horses, I would think, or two were a bomber in there. They get that return of investment. So, uh, you know, like you said, it's a little bit of a hungry race, and I just went with the stats in here. thought Major King would run okay. I totally agree. Victor's 25 percent with everything he does. He got an $8 ROI there. That's yeah. remarkable. This horse has a huge chance. He's the one to beat to me. Yeah, and you went to the the inside horse in here, Sterling. This is your launcher, right? It is. Sterling yeah. Harmony. It is. And you you know, you said it's kind of a race where you're allowed to maybe look outside the box a little bit. Steve Dwoskin uh, goes with his guy, Miguel Vasquez. There's a slew of worse. Fifth full out of the dam. Half to or Coop tries harder, who tried pretty hard. 22% mm. together when you put Steve and Miguel. We'll take a shot here. The number seven horse in here, Awesome Crusader, is wheeling back after the, I thought it was a solid turf debut in which he rallied to get the lead before finishing second at this level and distance. Uh, Ralph Nix, a 25, uh, as I said, uh, you know, he's good 25% with, with his turf sprinters. Edwin Gonzalez, you think that Ralph would be busy with all these horses he got entered <laughs> instead of coming here over here and bothering Maybe us. Maybe he was out there telling us, I'm going to win four today because <laughs> he's very, very live and he's got a lot of <laughs> solid runners. Awesome Crusader is one of them. Yeah, so so, you know, a wide open race, like you said, here for the finale, which makes it great because it's on the turf. But we're not then done, then. We're not done. We're going to show you our lightning round. Yeah, it is obviously Kentucky Oaks Day and Kentucky Derby weekend. But first and foremost, congratulations to Miguel Vasquez. One thousand career victories and he's done it kind of with a bullet because he's been in great form of late yeah he's been in great form and he's really a nice guy too uh couldn't agree more very well soft spoken and, and well spoken and here he is uh showing how good of a finisher he is too yeah you know beating the even money favorite in their moms and that was a great race boy they were ding-donging it right to the wire miguel back says congratulations one thousand victories yeah, there, uh, there you see it there, a nice sign, and uh, he's going to get plenty, plenty more because, uh, you know, he's very, very well mounted uh, throughout this Royal Palm meet. And then next up here, settling in as we've got uh, White Abario and Simplification, obviously charge it there as well. Uh, and uh, here's White Abario, uh, just, you know, strong gallop at, at Churchill Downs, continues to look the part. Yeah, and, you know, simplification, uh, Mike Welch from mm -hmm. the Daily Race Inform, who we trust a lot, especially uh, with, with his workouts and simplification, looks 
very, very good. Yeah, without a doubt. But there's stars galore. We watched three races already today, and the Gulfstream horses uh, have run very, very well. And there's a couple of them in the in the stakes up there at Churchill that are going to have huge chances. Here's Weyburn coming off the long, long layoff for Brendan Walsh, looking so good in our Sir Sa Sir. Shackleton on Curlin Florida Derby Day. And the one that I think, Ronnie, is going to be heck to pay in the grade one is obligatory, who I thought was awesome in her comeback. Yeah, and, you know, uh, the um, horses in there, they, after the races, were over, why burn get a one or two buyer? Everybody was talking about it. And obligatory only got a 95 buyer. I almost thought it should be reversed. Yeah, she was <laughs> devastatingly good. That was her first start since last year. And uh, I love her in uh, the grade one at Churchill. You know, we got that free uh, Kentucky Derby guide. It's available. Now is mm -hmm. the day to go on and get it. It's absolutely free. Boy, there's a lot of information on that thing. Charge it for you, correct? Yeah, charge okay. it for me. We're going to be right on top. We'll mm -hmm. say a 20 to 1 on the morning line, and that is put together by First Bet and Express Bet. And uh, uh, buddy Jeremy Plunk mm -hmm. does a great job. So, And it's free. So what's better than that? Nothing is better than that. And uh, we hope to see you out here today because we've got a strong nine race card. And if you are here, you can fire tomorrow on, uh, on the Derby card because advanced wagering is open as well. Yeah, advanced wagering is open. And I wanted to let everybody know that uh, Silks will be opening mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. tomorrow. That's a simulcast center. So at 10 a.m. for Silks. So you can get here early and bet all our races and, of course, all the races from Churchill Downs. Yeah, and 1220 post for us tomorrow as well on a really, really strong 12 race card. We are done. Upstairs to Pete. We'll be back for the opener. Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance is really the vehicle for the transition for our uh, racehorses coming off the track into uh, a second career and, and safe environment for, for these horses when they're done racing. I've been passionate about racehorses my whole life, animals in general, and without the TAA to provide that oversight, there would be a big void in terms of making sure that we have this ongoing safe environment for our off-the-track racehorses. excited about the undertaking and excited about working with our, our board and, and our, our team at the TAA to continue um, the wonderful progress that has been made. So I'm very excited about what the future holds.